So I hear you have a Green Hornet myth for us. I sure do. Here's the myth. The Black Beauty, our car, has been riddled with bullets in a car chase. We drive into an elevator to escape. The elevator lifts up our car, and the back half of it actually gets sheared off as the elevator goes up. But the front half of the car is able to drive out of the elevator, keep on going. Now, wait a minute. Isn't the Black Beauty a Chrysler Imperial? Sure is. Well, those are rear-wheel drive cars. If we cut the back end off, won't the front end just sit there? It would had my amazing partner Kato not made our car front wheel drive. He's tricky like that. Kato magic. OK, it sounds like a good story for us. Can a bullet ridden car be cut in half by an elevator? And can it still drive afterwards? Drop you by the elevators. I'll take it from here. After the Black Beauty has been shot up, it takes an unintentional ride in an elevator. Drive? Front wheel drive. Which leads to a two part question. Would the car really bifurcate like this? Now it's time to get to the science of this experiment, and that is we have to shoot this car with the hopes that we weaken the structural integrity that will give us the best fighting chance of cutting this car in half with an elevator. It pains me to think that we're going to shoot something this beautiful. And the only thing that gives me any consolation is the fact that we're going to be using submachine guns to do it. I think I'll get over it. I can't believe we're gonna do this. All right, you ready? No. Here we go. In three, two, one. Fire! Their goal is to match the movie scene shot for shot. If the Black Beauty on screen had over 200 bullet holes, well, theirs will too. That didn't suck. Clear. We started off with 25 rounds. We moved it to 50. Finally, we got all the way up to 270 rounds. But I mean, I'm looking at it, and I still see a lot of steel holding this car together. I don't think we've done enough structural damage with those rounds to actually cut this car with an elevator. If there's a circle of hell for people who destroy beautiful cars, that's where we're going. It lives! <laughs> Of course, this is the Black Beauty. Let's go find some crime. Let's go find an elevator. Yeah. We're in the welding bay at Hunter's Point so that we can test the myth from the Green Hornet that a car can be cut in half by an elevator. Now in the movie, this wasn't just any old elevator. This was a big glass elevator that the Black Beauty crashed through the side of and then got cut in half, not by the elevator's door frame, but actually by the ceiling. Now, we couldn't find any elevator like this at all anywhere. So, in Mythbusters fashion, we're going to create our own. And to do it, they've brought in over three and a half tons of steel for the elevator's structure and a forklift to provide the lift's lift. What I have here is a small scale model of what we're gonna be building. Now, these pieces here will all be steel I-beams and across the top and in the back. Now, the ceiling in the movie will be represented by a steel trench plate, which will weld to the top. So all of this is gonna be welded to the steel floor below us, which is embedded in the concrete. Now, it's important that this thing is structurally sound, because when that forklift starts lifting the car, there's gonna be a lot of force exerted on this structure, and it cannot move. With the three steel beams lifted, shifted, and welded securely, and the elevator floor trench plate in position, the elevator replica is just about good to go. You wanted the great mother of all elevators? Well, you got it. Behind me is three and a half tons of steel, over 50 linear feet of weld. Now, a regular service elevator has a lift capacity of about 10,000 pounds. The forklift that we're using has three and a half times that. If this can't cut the car in half, no elevator on Earth will. Second floor, ladies' lingerie. Meanwhile, down on the ground floor, Black Beauty is maneuvered into position. We're about to put our car into place, but we've drained all the fluid, so we need some heavy machinery to get it over there. And somebody shot up the tires. All right. We're in the elevator. Which means it's go time. But Carrie isn't exactly confident this movie myth will play out as it did on screen. We've built our elevator. We fashioned our black beauty so that it has a nice little bullet hole zipper right through the side, and we're ready to cut it in half. Are you guys ready? Personally, I think it's gonna go like this. Mm. Ah, squish. Ah, 
and then we're gonna have one kind of half pancakey car and possibly tear that thing out of the ground. Cut it in half, doubtful. Okay, this is the Green Hornet Black Beauty Bifurcation by Elevator in three, two, one, go. Bring her down. Okay. Well, Carrie called it. The structure broke free from the base. That's over three and a half tons of steel secured with heavy duty welds. If nothing else, the test showed what an elevator can do that's three and a half times more powerful than a regular one. All right, well, let's push this in place and we'll re-weld. So it's so important that our structure doesn't move. We tried lifting our car into our elevator and well, the whole structure broke free. All the welds broke on the floor. So we have re-welded, but not only have we re-welded, we welded chain and actually put a towing chain over the entire structure that is actually embedded in our floor. So if this thing breaks, we're gonna have to rethink this whole process. Okay, this is Reinforced building for the Green Hornet Black Beauty Biofication. Let's cut this car in half. All right. In three, two, one, go. There's no way this is happening. No way. I mean, that is way more powerful than a regular elevator, and we still were not able to cut that car in half. But power isn't really the point. As Grant explains, it's about the way that power is applied. So we set everything up just like they had in the movie. And you know, to get that sort of effect, that, that back end of the car being chopped off and falling down, you need a cutting force. What we have here is a crushing force. Wow. This is amazing, look at this! All right, that is a smash car. That is not a car cut in half. And that was an unrealistic amount of force that we put on it. Okay, I feel pretty good about going back to Seth and saying that this is busted. Good luck, I don't think we're gonna be able to convince him. <laughs>